In the last video, I explained broadly what Northern Powerhouse Rail is, or at least what it has become, and where the Western route would likely go. I also explained the similarities and differences between NPR and the recently proposed Liverpool Manchester Railway. If you haven't watched that video yet, I'd encourage you to watch that first. I said in part one that there'd be two parts to this, but I've decided to save the closing arguments for a third video, which will be released soon. Despite being developed separately, NPR and LMR are in fact broadly similar. However, the LMR board disagrees strongly with the government about how Manchester should best be served. The integrated rail plan option would see trains emerging from a tunnel in Ardwick. The tracks would then head into a new station that was to be constructed for HS2 services. But the plans for the new Piccadilly station were also altered to increase the number of platforms from 4 to 6, in order to provide capacity for NPR trains. The plans for the approach into Manchester Piccadilly were also modified to include passive provision for an east-facing junction. This would allow NPR trains to head east from Manchester towards Huddersfield and Leeds, potentially via a new tunnel to Marsden. Crucially, this means that NPR trains from Liverpool would have to reverse at Piccadilly to head east from Manchester, and vice versa for trains arriving from the east heading towards Liverpool. This required a clever junction design to maximise capacity, which potentially could have seen up to 18 trains entering and exiting the station per hour, assuming HS2 and NPR were built. Although a train service specification was not released for NPR, it was widely assumed that there would be up to four trains per hour from Liverpool to the east in each direction. This would have likely have seen what are currently Trans Pennine Express services from Liverpool transferred to NPR, plus potentially new services made possible with the additional capacity. This is where NPR and LMR begins to differ as the Mayor of Greater Manchester, Andy Burnham, is insistent that Manchester should have an underground or subsurface through station rather than a surface terminus. This is because the terminus is seen as inefficient and it would also take up space which the Mayor would like to see used to redevelop the area around the station. Given that building the so-called Stafford and Cheshire connectors effectively HS2 from Hansacre to High Lee are seen as crucial for maximising the benefits of LMR, then it would follow that the plans would have to include underground platforms or a terminus for HS2 services. When responding to the IRP proposal for NPR, Transport for Greater Manchester suggested building an underground station for HS2 and NPR services. However, I don't think the engineering challenges of building a six platform underground station with 400 meter long platforms should be underestimated. Comparisons were made with Old Oak Common, which is being built in an open box, which makes construction somewhat more straightforward. The site for Old Oak Common is however enormous, and I'm not convinced if there is space next to Piccadilly for a site of this scale. So, I'm yet to be convinced about the practicalities of building an underground or subsurface box station alongside Manchester Piccadilly. I'll be providing an update on progress at Old Oak Common soon, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video. The difference of opinion about how Manchester should best be served does raise a crucial question, and that is, what impact does this have on the existing hybrid bill? from High Lee to Manchester. The designs for the section from the tunnel portal in Ardwick to Piccadilly would likely have to be heavily revised to include provision for a through station, which has the potential to impact one of the main benefits of using the HS2 route as proposed from High Lee to Manchester, and that is the use of the hybrid bill and design work that has already been undertaken in order to speed up the legislation required. I am however uncertain if there is scope within the existing hybrid bill to make the changes that the LMR board has suggested. 
without having to go back through the two previous readings in Parliament. So I'm not sure what impact the inclusion of a through station would have on the amount of time it would take to progress the plans through Parliament. The hybrid bill for HS2 from Crewe to Manchester was about to go through the third and final reading in the House of Commons before Rishi Sunak cancelled the section from Hansacre to High Lee. Development of the bill from Crewe to Manchester was not officially stopped, but instead it was proposed that the section should be repurposed for NPR. Progress on the bill was however effectively paused and it remains unclear if any further design work has taken place since Network North was announced two years ago. If altering the bill means it will take longer for LMR to progress through Parliament, then I think it's fair to ask, why use the section of HS2 for NPR or LMR, given there are potentially more optimal routes for a purely east-west railway? The main reason is the planning and legislation, and the government argues this would allow plans for NPR to be delivered more quickly. And it is true that a lot of design and parliamentary work has already been done. But, given the fact it was revealed that the benefit to cost ratio for the route from High Lee to Manchester without HS2 is 0.4, then the parliamentary process argument alone would seem somewhat weak. Although I should stress, I do not believe that infrastructure spending decisions should rest wholly on rigid BCR calculations. But, I can't see the Treasury supporting a project that would, on paper, cost more to build than it would deliver in benefits. This is why the plans for LMR rely heavily on the delivery of the so-called Staffordshire and Cheshire connectors, effectively HS2 from Hansacre to Crewe and High Lee. This is because the introduction of up to five HS2 services in each direction improves the business case. Put simply, a 13 km long tunnel used by nine or 10 trains per hour in each direction has a much stronger case the one that will be used by as few as four NPR trains in each direction. The route for NPR, as proposed, is not without its merits, as it would connect Warrington Bank Quay, Manchester Airport, and LMR say they are developing plans for a new Liverpool Gateway Station, which could possibly serve Liverpool Airport somehow. The main problem with the proposals arises from the cancellation of HS2 as this puts the entire cost of the tunnel and two large new stations onto NPR. So serious questions do arise, especially if there is little hope of something akin to HS2 from Hansacre to High Lee ever being delivered. The service pattern suggested by LMR does however show services to Chester, Crewe and Birmingham. But this relies on a connection to the West Coast Main Line and Chester to Manchester Line near to Warrington Bank Quay, and also appears to allow trains to stop at the proposed Warrington Bank Quay low level station. But the only way to deliver this, using the existing link from the Skelton Junction to Ditton Junction Line to the West Coast Main Line, would be to build the Warrington Bank Quay low level station to the east of Bank Quay. But, in order to take advantage of the existing infrastructure, would require the new platforms to be up to 500 metres away from the existing station, which would make calling it an interchange a bit tenuous. There is, however, too little detail to go off to make an assessment at this stage. The only services that we can say with any degree of certainty that are likely to be diverted via NPR would be existing Transpanine Express services from Liverpool to the east. This would ease congestion in Manchester somewhat, but it's questionable if that's enough to justify £17 billion that was promised by the previous government for NPR. As far as I'm aware, that funding envelope would only cover the cost of the line set out within the integrated rail plan, and would not cover additions such as the link to the West Coast Main Line in Warrington, proposed Liverpool Gateway Station, a dedicated route into Liverpool, or through station in Manchester. 
I appreciate this paints a fairly bleak picture and I do feel that there is a strong case for building a new connection between Liverpool and Manchester. A case which I'll set out in more detail in part 3. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss that video.